so I was going through your resume. Mm-hmm. So, so you have experience in both Angular and React, correct? Uh, no, actually, I have experience only in Angular, but I'm mm-hmm. tr- I'm learning React. I have an interview that I have to give in React. Okay, so did yeah. you do any interviews before this? Uh, no, actually, no. That's the reason I have asked your help. Okay, and uh, so you did not work in real time in uh, React, correct? No, I did not work real time in React. I just did a Udemy course and I have, you know, uh, gone through all the interview stuff and all. I have got an interview opportunity with React and I don't really want to miss it. I mean, it's a good opportunity. So that's the reason I'm preparing for it. Okay. Okay, so this is this would be the, your first interview then for React. Yes, yeah. Uh, and uh, what you have to, tell, told them, how much experience do you have in React? Uh, I said I have experience in Angular and React. Both and my total experience is eight years. So mm-hmm. I'm planning to say that I have like two to three years of experience in React, not more than that. Okay. Because yeah. if you say as a front-end developer, eight years experience now, they will ask question they, uh, according to that. So that is why I'm asking. So relevant experience, exactly. maybe they may might, they might have been asked you to relevant experience in the both as well. Correct? Yeah. Hmm. Yes. So what I'll do is I'll tell them I have less experience in React when compared to Angular. And the recent project which I'm working also is in Angular. So I worked with React like uh, a while ago, like maybe a year and a half or mm-hmm. ago like that. The present project um, I will do that I'm working in Angular. Correct. Yep. That can be helpful. Okay. So before start, do you have any questions? Uh, nothing much. Uh, I have mm-hmm. seen your uh, videos in YouTube also. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, they were uh, quite interesting and it, I learned some things from them. So mm-hmm. let's do a quick mock interview and that way I can also know if I have to brush up on something else or uh, like that. So you joined from laptop, correct? Yes, I joined from laptop only. Okay. So I might ask you to create small example as well. So okay. do you have the run in ready environment at your local? So code sandbox or something for React? Yeah, we can uh, I mean we can try. Okay. No problem. Because it's on okay. Unique. Yeah. I also have Visual Studio code, but I have some uh, problems running with the running environment with some versions of React and Node, they were conflicting. Okay, okay. Yep, that is fine. So we'll try to see that if I get if I get some time, then we'll go through the small example as well. Otherwise, I will sure. give you one link over there. You can have that uh, challenges. I will show you at the end. If I forget, let me, please mention me. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah? Okay, yep, okay. Uh, okay, so we'll start with interview directly. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you uh, you did only Udemy course, correct? Yes. Uh, okay. Okay, then no problem. Okay, so uh, what I will do, I will start with first React. So okay. maybe if we get some time, then we can cover the JavaScript as well. You might be working in that as well, in the, with Angular as well. So you might know the concepts from the JavaScript as well because the interviewer will ask the question related to that as well correct yeah right yeah so prepare for that as well so we'll see that if we get more time then we can have some questions related to javascript as well at the end sure sure okay so uh i usually ask the this is the first question so what version you are work uh, you are working in the react okay so i have worked with version 16 in the react uh, so Basically, I have worked with uh, mostly React hooks, functional programming. I've also worked with uh, class-based components. However, mostly I was into, I was using functional-based components in my experience. Okay. So do you know what is different between both? 
yes so uh, in a class based component you generally uh, have i mean it's uh, based out of uh, uh, i mean uh, a class uh, so basically you have a constructor and then if you want to use the props you have to pass in the uh, constructor and uh, you also have some state managements however in the functional based components you do not have uh, a class you you will write directly as a function and you will return a function you don't have a render method in a uh, function based components uh, in order to you know uh, also in the class you have all the life cycle books where you can uh, do some operations like if you want to do an api call you can do it in the life cycle book however in the function based component you can't uh, i mean you can't use the life cycle books that is the reason uh, they have introduced the react books uh, mm -hmm. in order to you know uh, uh, like in order to overcome all those uh, things that were there in the class based components and encourage developers to use functional based components they have introduced react hooks in react 16 and one of the react hook is uh, use effect which can be used for uh, like you know uh, calling the side effects doing some api operations in the programs i mean in the applications yeah correct okay so what is the more interesting in the functional component instead of the class base so what 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 do you think this is the good thing to work on the functional component instead of using the class based component uh first thing is uh, you know you don't have to do so many bindings uh, for example in the class component if you want to pass props or anything you have to uh, make sure that you uh, you know uh, you have to make sure that you have them in the super and then you have to pass it all through however in functional components you don't have to do that uh, if you want to use the state, I mean, state management is easy in functional components from the developer mm -hmm. point of view. Also, uh, from the performance point of view, uh, if you see, uh, if you write a class component uh, in the compilation process, while the compilation is happening, uh, like, I mean, uh, during the web pack, what will happen, the class will get converted into the function. And then, uh, I mean, all this transpiling process is a one step uh, more when you use a class based component however when you use a functional based component uh, since it is already a function since we have already written a function it will directly uh, like it will directly get converted and that compile uh, that compiling and the transpiling process will be one step uh, less in uh, this if you use a functional based component that is the reason uh, you i mean uh, developers are encouraged to use functional based components more since it is also affect the performance you will you will get a better performance the rendering of ui will mm -hmm. be uh, faster comparatively okay okay so uh, have you heard about code splitting in react code splitting mm -hmm. uh not really code splitting uh, that means uh, i mean is it uh, something like uh, uh, i mean reusing our components or something like that i have never heard actually yeah. So we do break our application into the multiple components, correct? Right. And we do create a, their template files and all every there. And we do import yes. the components. Correct? Yes. Whenever yeah. you, suppose you want to use a lazy component somewhere in your application. So how will, how you will we use that? Uh, you will pass it in the router, for example, I mean, in the router, I mean, in in the route basically uh, you will give a path and then you will uh, mention it as oh, lazy see. and then you will give the so, component see. you have one product detail page okay over there you mm -hmm. want to show the basic details so you have created one component basic info mm -hmm. okay it is taking okay. some props and it is showing the data so okay. uh, when you use that basic detail component into the product detail so how you will able to access that component over there you will import you will import that component and you will uh -huh. pass the props of that uh, props to that component so that uh, you can uh, display it yep so there is a lazy method as well have you heard about it yes i have heard i mean you can use it in the router it's okay. nothing but lazy loading right yep so that is for routing as well so if you want to load the lazy component like the way for the basic component so how you will do that not really sure there is a method of the react lazy correct okay. that we have yeah. to use yeah so we have to pass your input callback function to your lazy function so it will do that 
Okay. Yep. Note down this question and read about it. Yeah, sure. Okay. So, uh, have you heard about the render props in React? How we do render props? Yes, uh, I mean, the props, right? I mean, generally props are used for passing the data between uh, the parent and the child. If you want any data to be displayed in the child component that has to be passed to the parent, you, you pass it as props. Okay, and if I want to share the multiple data, uh, share that data to the multiple components, then how can I do that? Uh, you can, I mean, uh, you can always uh, write a, uh, what a reducer function okay using the redux using a redux you can write a reducer function and what you can do is you can mm -hmm. uh, make use of that reducer function in any level in your code i mean in any component in the hierarchy without having to do i mean without having to actually do the props drilling you can directly use your reducer functions okay is there any other way yeah, in the tradi I mean, uh, before the introduction of the hooks, uh, we used to do it with the help of context API. However, there are some loopholes to that context API because of which, uh, I mean, since it's error prone, it's not uh, encouraged to use it. Okay. So, Redux is a third party library, correct? Yes. Yeah. So, if you want to share the data only from one component to another component, only for five times or six times in your application. So in that in that case, what you will prefer to use? I mean, uh, we will use props itself. <clears throat> props and callbacks. I mean, for example, if you want to share between parents and child, if, the, if it's a top to bottom hierarchy, we will use props. And if it's a bottom to top, we will use the callback functions. Okay, that is for parent child and for sibling. Yes. sibling uh... you can use context api correct yeah we can use context api right yep okay yep correct okay so in your application how do you handle the authentication and authorization uh, generally we uh, handle the authentication and authorization using this uh, jwt token mm -hmm. that which i mean storing uh, storing our credentials in the uh, a session storage uh, what you do is you uh, like you just validate them if, if the user that's been logged in has the correct jwt token or not okay so this is what authorization or authentication authentication okay and what about authorization uh authorization is nothing but uh, you know ha if you if a particular user is having access to a particular page or not uh, that can be done with the help of routing. I'm mm -hmm. not sure in React. I mean, generally in Angular, we can do it uh, like using the help of guards. I think in React also, you should have the same concept. Mm -hmm. Authentication guards. Okay. So, and uh, what about security? Means uh, what are the things we have to be taken care of while writing all those things? Uh make sure your uh, http calls are uh, uh, properly uh, or properly used and uh, there will be some things uh, in react i'm actually not sure in angular we use this dom sanitize methods and all mm -hmm. I, do we have all those in react as well yeah that that we have to implement with the third party libraries as well yeah okay so uh, have you heard about S csrf cross site request for for tree yes yes yeah so what it is uh it's nothing but when you are uh, when you are not hitting the i mean uh when you are hitting the wrong you i mean how do i say uh it's like cross site scripting mm. uh, i mean if you have a two domain two, two different domains for example if you want to hit a domain and if you are not hitting it uh, through that domain if you go through some other cross site, then you get that error. Okay, so that is course error. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Course, course. Oh, I'm asking CSRF. 
Okay, yes, read about this as well because context, sometimes see, content security, right? It is cross site request forgery. Okay, yeah, I'll read about it. Yep, yep, okay. And one more question suppose you, uh, okay, so user logged in your application and he did not touch anything, okay, any page. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, how you will automatically log out him from the application? Up to see if user is not using the website for one minute, then you should automatically log out that user. So, how you will implement this? Mm, using the session inactive or something. But how? How you will implement? How you will check that user is using the application or not? Do I mean, for example, if if we press any, I mean, if we uh, if the user is pressing any key or doing any action, uh, based on that, we will see if the session is inactive or active. Like we have but, certain methods, right? Uh, debounce and all. Okay, so but where you will write that code? Suppose you have ten components. Okay. And your root component is a one component, okay? And inside that you will have ten, nine components. Then how you will communicate that to the other components? The user is pressing some keys over here or not? I mean, generally we check such things in the root level, like interceptors or odd guards. Okay, that is at the time of the load up application, not the in between. Yeah. Okay. Read about this, how to do that. Session inactivity, yeah. Sure. Yep, session inactivity. Okay. Okay, we'll move to the next question. Uh, so, okay. So, have you tried the server-side rendering for uh, React? Uh, no. Okay. So, do you know about it, anything? Uh, generally, server-side, I mean, in general terms, I know what is server-side rendering because a uh, server-side rendering is nothing but you don't have much logic on the client side. If you request anything, uh, I mean, if you do any action on the web UI, uh, you will get you will get the uh, HTML code or the view code necessary to display uh, from the server itself. That way, it will the rendering will be easy. I mean, it will be very fast. Okay rather than doing the logics and operations from the client side. Okay. So how do you handle the data fetching and synchronize operation in React? Uh, data fetching is, uh, I mean, fetching from an API, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. Uh, you can do it in two ways. Uh, I mean, you can use the fetch. Uh, if you use uh, dot fetch, what will happen is uh, you will return, I mean, it will return you a promise. So you have to resolve the promise using dot then. Uh, you can use it. I mean, you can also use at the rate, I mean, uh, sorry, use effect uh, react hook. If hmm. you use a uh, use effect react hook, it will, uh, I mean, uh, basically for use effect react hook, it will have some default arguments like uh, what has to be done and uh, when it, when the UI has to render. So if you pass the arguments, depending on that, uh, the API call will happen. Uh, you can do it using Axios. If you use Axios, uh, it's a third party library. It's nothing but it's like a HTTP client for Angular. Uh, if mm -hmm. you use Axios, what will happen? Uh, directly, the result will directly give you a, a response object instead of a promise like we have using dot fetch. Okay. So if your data getting not suppose your API get failed in that in that case oh, how, how you will handle it uh we can have a what uh error of error error object mm -hmm. and uh, write and handle the error case in the error object okay We have something like error boundary. Correct. That is what yeah. I'm asking. Okay. So, but do you know how to write that error boundary for application? Where we have to uh, add that? No, I don't know. Actually, I'll 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 have I'll show you that. I'll practice that. Okay. But but I saw that error boundary was before the introduction of hooks. So after the introduction of hooks, it will not work, right? 
यू कैन यूज कैच एज वेल ना ट्राई कैच ओके एरर फॉर एरर हैंडलिंग करेक्ट ओके सो इफ यू यूजिंग इफ यू आर यूजिंग यूजर इफ हुक यू विल डू इट यूजिंग कैच इफ यू आर यूजिंग अ सिंक वेट ओके देन यू कैन यूज कैच एज वेल ओके एंड इफ यू आर यूजिंग द प्रोमिस लाइक द वे फॉर फेच एंड एक्सीओस देन यू विल बी हैविंग द रिजोल्व एंड रिजेक्ट मेथड करेक्ट ओवर देयर इन या द कैच ब्लॉक यू कैन गेट यूर एरर ओके यस so have you heard about to use memo yeah use memo is a react hook uh, that is used for you know uh, expensive uh, cpu operations okay cpu operations means uh, i mean uh, in any changes to the dom basically however uh, if they are uh, like uh, if if they are not to be done frequently uh if no they then you have to use the uh, use memo no not not like that okay see it is kind of the technique to uh memorize your data okay so to un avoid the unnecessary call okay oh yeah it will cache actually right it will cache it, it will have a cache so that every time when the user is uh, uh, asking for that information it doesn't have to uh, like uh, undergo the uh, entire process it will return the result from the cache hmm yep correct okay so uh, read about that as well sure so have you heard about reconciliation reconciliation hmm no not really okay yep read about this as well okay, okay. so what is forward reps uh forward refs i actually forgot i read about them uh, i mean generally ref is nothing but if you uh, if you want to uh, have access to what's in, what's uh, i mean if you want to have access to the dom directly if, if something is been typed in the input box or something we use ref hmm yeah so what forward ref i don't remember sorry i read about it but i i forgot okay read about that because that is also one one of the used concept mm -hmm, sure okay. yep okay so have you heard about higher order components yes higher order components are nothing but if you want to i mean generally they are used for reusability if you don't want to uh, write again repeated code we use higher order components higher order components are uh, components which take uh, another component as an input and gives a enhanced component okay so can you give me the one example of it where you will use the higher order component um for example say uh, you have a, a you have a file where you have some form or something i mean generally uh, you try to use higher order component if, if it doesn't have any logic like most of the contents should be static then only you are supposed to use higher order components okay uh okay so have you heard about react fiber uh react fiber is nothing but it's a it, it's a normal uh, framework to use react js okay anything else mm, no okay read about this as well okay sure ah uh, okay so uh, okay suppose uh, you have a big scale application okay in react and okay it is taking quite a time to load the components getting the data from back end and you might have been seen that uh, suppose that application is not following the proper things whatever we use as code code splitting and all so mm -hmm. instead of using lazy loading and code splitting how we you will check the performance of application and how we you will implement it means optimize it okay generally uh, you can optimize the uh, react applications using uh, lazy loading and we can also uh, i mean we have to sh uh, make sure that our uh, application is not having too many uh, 
too many things that will affect the DOM because that will again affect the performance. Uh, I mean, re-rendering of the DOM. Uh, and we can also uh, see if we are using the context API because that context API will uh, slow down the application performance. We should not mostly use it. Uh, and we can also see uh, there is another, uh, like uh, there, there are things like string APIs. Uh, we should not use that string APIs as well because uh, performance will be affected with that. Okay, but how you will identify this component is taking this much of size in the bundle file. Suppose you have 10 components and nine component is taking 100 KB, but your one component is taking 5 MB. So how you will know that? Mm, not sure. I mean, is there any command or so to see such things? There is a package, one package, Webpack Bundle Analyzer. Okay. It helps us to uh, get the size of the bundles. Okay, so um, this will, where yeah. will we see this? I mean, when you do npm start or? No, no, no. You have to import it from the npm. You have to download that. Okay. Just try to see and... Uh, Okay, so uh, another thing, so we have to compress our JavaScript CSS file as well, correct? Yeah. While optimizing. And one mm -hmm. more thing over there, we have to think about the SSR as well. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Then uh, we have multiple ways to handle the things at the UI, like the way we have, you might have been heard about service worker and progressive web apps. Yeah. That also would be kind of the helpful. And uh, suppose your image is taking five seconds of time, okay? To mm -hmm. optimize it, what you will do? Uh, to optimize it, I mean, to generally fix such scenarios, what we can do is uh, we can introduce a loader so that the user will not uh, get affected. Uh, so, I mean, it will show a loader See. so until the image will right. be loaded. See. Suppose you have an application, but that image is not loading into the viewport. When you scroll down, then only that image is visible to user. Okay. But okay. In, but right now what happening, it is taking 5 seconds. See, 15 mm -hmm. seconds it is taking. Still that is okay. not in the viewport, current viewport. When you scroll down, then only it should be visible. Okay. But mm -hmm. still it is loading to the DOM. So that I am asking, do you know how to do this? No, I ha I actually I don't know. Yeah, so we can load the image as a lazy as well. Okay. Lazy load images there, defer loading. Oh yeah, yeah. right. I have seen that. Yeah, we have that yeah. lazy uh, property in the image also. Yep. Try to implement that in somewhere so you will understand it thoroughly. Okay. And we take one technique we talked about the react memo use memo yeah so that also be helpful for in that case okay there are a couple you of things I'm... yeah so yeah improve the performance. To... okay hmm, sure. that, yep. okay so what is react suspense suspense hmm. no i haven't heard about it actually are you sure yeah suspense Have you imported a components in application? Yes. Okay. So to make it as a lazy loading, what you do? We add a lazy in the route. Okay. Anything else you do? Uh, that's it. We add lazy in the route and what we will do is instead of directly rendering the component, we uh, uh, we write it as a arrow function mm -hmm. so that we'll be able to pass the props. Okay. Yep. So that is the method of the our React lazy, correct? Yes. Yeah. So there is concept as a suspense as well. So read that as well. Okay. Inside the lazy itself. Yep. It is used to the data fetching as well. 
ओके रीड अबाउट दैट यस श्योर ओके ओके सो हाउ द ट्री शेकिंग हैपन्स इन द रिएक्ट generally it's a process of that uh, compilation itself i mean uh, tree shaking is nothing but uh, removal of all the unused things in the application uh, mm -hmm. any unused variables or unused functions anything that is not been used uh, will be removed as a part of that bundling process okay ah uh, okay i think we have covered the uh, the difficult question i think i do do not ask this much difficult question mostly but uh, as per your experience so i thought that i can ask such kind of questions so okay yeah. okay so have you created a validation form yes i have created a validation form okay so how you will handle the validations in that and error handling uh i mean generally while you write a form itself you you will have that error uh, error properties uh, so we can handle there itself for example if you have a email then you will have the valid email validation correspondingly okay mm, okay so have you heard about firebase as well firebase or something yes okay so Okay, so have you heard about SSO login? SSO login, single sign on. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, I generally know about single sign on. It's like if you sign in once, you'll be. I mean, you'll be there instead of again. I mean, uh, like uh, how do I say? It's it's like Octa. Oct we have this Octa verify login, right? Mm hmm. Yeah, something like that. Okay. Yep. can we create a custom react hook yes we can create a custom react hook uh, if you have to uh, you know if you have any functionality that requires you to create a custom react hook you have to create it if in general we use mostly the built in react hooks because react uh, provides a lot of hooks uh, so if you if the purpose is not uh, met then you build a custom react hook okay multiple questions related to both side react and uh, i wanted to take the javascript as well but that is fine right now you can read about the questions from the javascript and you can prepare the question which i mostly asked you so as per your experience they will try to give the more architecture level kind of questions not the only the writing the junior level coding questions okay yeah, yeah. so with respect to react i i have uh, noted down all the questions so i will go mm. through them i yeah. will also try to you know, uh, write the code for the respective scenarios correct i will practice that as well however uh, with respect mm. to javascript i mean uh, could you tell me based on your experience if, if in the react interview uh, mm -hmm. will they focus more on the react uh, architecture or on the javascript see what happens so depend upon the interviewer as well how okay. he is looking for the candidate but uh, javascript the javascript is the basic of everything correct so yeah you should be knowing all those things what is event yes. loop then how you will create the asynchronous synchronous because you are using the fetch from there only array methods we are using from there only so yeah all those things are based on the javascript only so that is what i'm saying so prepare for that as well so you can go through our videos i asked too many questions related to javascript and you can note down those questions one by one so it will help you for the future sure sure uh, so i mean actually i've gone through certain videos and the javascript uh, is actually fine by me however mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, there will be some problem solving questions right mm hmm yeah so i was looking on some problem solving questions so if you have any uh, 
any material or any, any questions uh, that you can provide me that will be great like uh, okay so okay. actually yeah. see what i do usually i i do create some array and i try to ask on based on the on the time only so for not each one i do ask but the people who are the junior level so i do ask for them mostly okay yeah I, so mostly it will be hmm. array methods like map filter and yeah what is yeah. the no, uh, arrow function what is this over there what is difference between arrow function and normal function all such kind of simple simple questions not much difficult yeah. okay anything else okay, yeah. That's cool. Uh, nothing much. In the beginning, you told me that you will provide me some. Uh, oh, oh, sorry. React. Let thing. me share my screen with you. Sure. Uh, I'm just ping. Let me mail you as well. Okay, sharing my screen. Okay, so. Uh, here is a simple website. Uh, peoples has been created. So this is the mm -hmm. React Mini challenges. So you can find okay. the React challenges and JavaScript challenges over here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So so sometimes what happens? So interview will ask you to create a counter like this. Yeah. Correct? And if I want to decrease by five and reset it as well. Okay. And decrease okay. by five. Okay. So such kind of things uh, mostly as the interview. So try to solve this kind of things. So it will help you. Suppose if I add over here and I put enter. So few days only I got to know about it. So I'm trying to create a small, small videos on this as well. So how to do this and what are the things interview will, will see while you are writing this such kind of code. So let me share this both the links with you. So you can see here JS Mini and React Mini. Correct. Oh, yeah, this, this is actually interesting. Yeah. If you yeah, so, solve such questions, it will be helpful in the interviews. Yeah, so that is what I'm saying. Actually, I asked a couple of questions to the people, but uh, I found it difficult to solve in the interview. So I thought that I can share this. So it will helpful for everyone. So investment capital yeah. there. Suppose someone yeah. asked to create this, so how much investment would be like this? Mm. So I have pasted in the chat. You can copy it. And sure, sure. Somewhere. Otherwise, I will mail you as well. Copy okay. link. Let me. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for providing this. Yep. Okay, then. If you need any help, ping me on Instagram anytime. Yeah, sure, sure. So mostly my uh, interview is on uh, like uh, tomorrow itself. However, tomorrow it's with uh, like architect and the director. So I, I'm thinking it will be mostly based on uh, behavioral questions and uh, resume based interview. So okay. if uh, if it gets to the next point, you know, where I will have a technical interview, mm -hmm. uh, if I require another round, I will practice. Def I'll definitely practice all these mini challenges and the questions which you asked me just now also. So if I require another, uh, probably another round from you, another mock interview, I'll be, I'll reach yes. out to you. Yep. Yep. No problem. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yep.